Hi, thanks for being in a new video. This time I have unboxing of the new iPad Air with the M3 processor. Let's get started. This generation of iPad is available in 11 and 13 inch sizes. I have here the 11 inch size which has a base price of 12,999 pesos. On the screen you see the reference price in dollars to give you an idea but remember that the prices here are not the same as there while the 13 inch model goes up to 17,499 pesos. Honestly for that extra space I would not invest so much money. In this case, it is also compatible with the new Apple Pencil Pro that we also have here for unboxing and some first basic tests. This Apple Pencil Pro is sold separately and is priced at 2,499 pesos. On screen again, you see the reference price in dollars just to give you an idea. So let's first take the iPad out of this box and we do a few small tests. As you notice on the box, this is the 128GB model which is the cheapest edition, however they also have a 1TB edition, although obviously it's going to be very expensive. So let's take this cover off so we can finally access the iPad. Just as you notice it comes wrapped and in this case I have the blue edition but it's also available in purple, stellar white and space grey. And in all of those color configurations you'll find this same finish in a slightly paler shade. It honestly looks very nice, it's very nice in terms of its design. The apple with the reflective finish also gives it a very premium touch. And on the back we will find some pins through which you can connect other accessories to it. So let me turn this tablet on and while it's powering up let's see what else comes in the box. It strikes me that the startup animation is displayed vertically, although this iPad comes much more intended to be used horizontally, as finally the camera has this orientation. But before we set it up, let me see what else comes in the box so you can see what things you can use. So in this envelope we're going to find some basic information, some old fashioned paperwork as I say. And if you didn't already know, from this generation of products do not come stickers of the Apple, although you can request them at the Apple Store if you have purchased it there. So forget about stickers, they are no longer available. Fortunately what is still included in iPad boxes is charger and cable. In this case we are talking about a 20 watt charger which is surely not going to represent a very fast charge considering that the iPad has a much larger battery than a cell phone. And it comes with this braided cable to have a good resistance from USB-C to USB-C. We definitely found something modern in the cable though unfortunately the charger isn't as fast as we'd like. So that's all that comes in the box. How about you join me in getting to know the iPad a little closer. But while we're setting up the iPad, let me also pull out the Apple Pencil Pro. Again, it comes with super nice packaging to open, so we just slide this out and that's it. And now let's pull out this little box. Here it also says what all Apple products say, designed by Apple in California. Take this box out because in here we're going to find also... Some quick guides and documentation, better known as the little papers of a lifetime. And after that we find the Apple Pencil, which for those who don't know in this generation is even going to detect rotation. So it can change the style of your stroke if you rotate the pencil and it also has a vibration motor to generate an optical response when you're using it. So they have really upped the level of the Apple Pencil in this generation with the Pro model although it is also compatible with previous generations so you don't necessarily need to buy the latest Apple Pencil. If you want to save a little you can also buy Apple Pencil from past generations. Indeed this is set. So here is the iPad already configured. Remember that with this generation of iPad OS we already have widgets available on the home screen. So there is much more customization and you can make better use of the screen space. By the way, it is an 11 inch screen with IPS technology. We find a resolution that Apple calls Retina. It is 2360 by 1640 pixels. However, it is a 60 hz screen that honestly does not look so spectacular in terms of movements, although it does come with true tone that will allow you to have a white balance very similar to the ambient white color, so it always gives you a very natural tone screen, that's something I really like, but definitely the fact that it is a 60 hz screen takes away a lot of fluidity to the entire system, especially if you have already tried screens of 90 or 120 hz, you will notice it immediately. Then this iPad has a thickness of 6.1 
1.1 millimeters, so it is super thin and weighs 462 grams. This obviously without its keyboard accessory. If you buy the keyboard accessory, the weight will surely increase significantly. But if you are not going to use an additional keyboard, I think it is very comfortable to take to school. In this case, it integrates four audio outputs. Two on the right side and two on the left side. Honestly, the sound is of excellent quality. I tried it a moment ago and I really liked it. The front camera is 12 megapixels with f2.0 aperture. It offers us video signal in full HD for video calls and definitely the image quality is excellent. And definitely that the image quality is very good, especially if you compare it to what you would find in a computer camera as you even notice that it is a super wide camera and that in conjunction with the software it can also help you stay focused in case you are moving around while doing some exposure or something similar through a video call so it has good features. On the back we'll find a 12 megapixel camera with f1.8 aperture it gives you up to 5x digital zoom i like that they haven't integrated more cameras because they would just raise the cost of the tablet and in this case on a tablet i personally feel that you just need a camera back here to scan some documents and that's it but it also has the ability to record video in 4k up to 60 frames per second so it's got very good video recording capabilities and all of that is thanks to it incorporating Apple's M2 processor, which is a blazing fast processor. We're going to run a Geekbench test just to give you a benchmark of the performance that it's capable of. So I'll get back to you when this benchmark test is done. And that's it. Look at this tremendous result. It's honestly one of the most powerful you're going to find. 10,078 multi-core points. Believe me, it's a brutal thing. Tremendous power, which in fact surely many people will not get to take advantage of 100%. It is an exaggeratedly powerful processor to talk about a device of these characteristics. On the other hand, in a single core, it reached 2,606 points, which is also a pretty high score. But now what do you think if we run another benchmark? Now it will be Antutu to check more or less how it behaves in graphics issues. Let's put it in execution and I'll get back to you when it's finished. And that's it. As you can see, it's finished and it got almost 2 million points. Again, it's an exaggeratedly high score, 1,971,077 points. So in summary, this device is one of the most powerful that you will find in terms of processor. For example, if you want to work video editing in a very portable way and you accommodate the applications you use through touch interface, it can become a very good tool because it is super light and helps you in any way with a lot of power. Remember that the iPad for example includes applications such as iMovie for free which is a simple editor but through which you can edit very fast, has its own office suite as pages, numbers and keynote that would be the alternatives to Word, Excel and PowerPoint, even brings GarageBand which is to create music also completely free and if you want something more professional there is also Logic Pro for iPad where you can have even more music creation tools. Uh, and also Final Cut as well as LumaFusion which for example is one of the most popular editors and obviously it is also available on the iPad so the applications are obviously of a super good level. Although the vast majority of applications are going to require a subscription or some special payment but at least these that come pre-installed are completely free. Let's connect now the Apple Pencil Pro so you can see how easy it is. Just stick it on the top of the device. Oh, and immediately it's going to link and it's going to load so that interaction is very good. Here it gives us some of the actions that we can do as we can press the pencil, we can also press it twice. Very similar to what we see on the AirPods and remember you can handwrite in any text field plus you can edit your screenshots then watch it says here try to press it let's get it out of the way here. In fact you can also have a pinch gesture held down and notice how you can also interact with other kinds of menus. So watch if I'm painting or something I can hold down and watch how a special menu pops up where I can switch to the eraser or I can change the color or whatever. Or I can change the color or anything else. So it also has a very good interaction and as I tell you in any text field that exists on the iPad we can write by hand very easily. Although by the position in which I am at the moment I didn't manage to write very well. But remember that you can delete it by crossing it out. And now I'm going to change the position of my hand to be able to write correctly. There it is. In fact, this pencil can also be added to the Find My Apple Devices network, so if you lose it, you can also try to locate it through the map. So as I say, the Apple Pencil can be a very useful tool. Now Apple released an application called Freeform, which is a kind of infinite canvas. That's it. This is the... Uh, you can zoom forward, zoom out, and you can slide to all sides. So in this case, there are no limits and it can be a good tool to create mind maps. Remember that Apple has several tools also to be able to create perfectly well-defined shapes with the pencil. 
And as I say now, at the moment of pressing the pencil, we can interact creating new menus and having new tools that will help us a lot on a daily basis in all the elaboration of our document. Now notice that in this case, if I change to a different brush when I bring the Apple Pencil closer, it is projected on the screen as would be the stroke. And notice that turning the Apple Pencil would also modify that stroke. Deepen up. That is something that so far I had not seen in this type of special pencils. So if we want a thin and strong stroke, we can do it this way. We can rotate to make other types of strokes and remember that it is also sensitive to pressure. If I press hard on the screen, it will be painted very strong and if I just pass the pencil lightly over the screen, it will paint more softly. So for the artist, uh, soft. So for artists, definitely this is a super good tool. The fact that it detects the rotation gives it a very advanced touch that as I say so far, we had not seen in other tablets. And obviously also remember that you will have available the function of floating screens so you can have several applications open at the same time. This. Several applications open at the same time. This you can also transform it into a split screen easily. You can also change the space you give to each of them. And another very curious detail of the pencil is that you see the shadow that is under the pencil. That is an artificial shadow. It looks like a completely real shadow. But as I say, it is an artificial shadow because the light from my window would not generate such shadows. But it appears under the pencil to give you also a very realistic sensation at the moment of there are moments where the shadow is frozen. I don't know if you can distinguish it, but it's just to confirm that it's obviously a virtual shadow. The truth is that this kind of little details have made the experience with the Apple Pencil really is a very high level. But soon I will share more information about this tablet so you can also see the performance test that I will perform and how is your camera and other details. For now, we have reached the end of this video. I hope you liked it. If so, you know that you can indicate it and we'll see you next time. Time.